Okay, so I, I'm going to start about uh, I'm going to start talking about the one API uh, as Jose introduction uh, told you. Um, there is a relatively new product Intel was promoting one API since the last year. So today I have divided the, 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 this presentation in two main different parts. The first one, the first block of slices, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a briefly introduction of one API, which is the, the, the most important part of uh, this uh, switch the different toolkits as uh, Jose advanced you. And in the second one, uh, I'm going to focus on the, the uh, data parallel C++, which is known as the core of uh, the one API, and how you can write your own code, how you can uh, develop your own code in different type of devices, such CPUs, uh, in integrate GPU of, of Intel, and even in FPGAs. So in this first part, uh, I'm going to talk about the introduction of one API. So I divide this block of uh, slices. Uh, this, as you can see, this is the agenda. Uh, I have divided these uh, slices in, first of all, uh, the concepts, the concept of one API and why uh, one API came uh, for our community of developers and what are the main features of uh, one API uh, that try to solve uh, one of the problems of uh, unified programming across multiple uh, multiply architecture. Uh, later, I'm going to move uh, to tools, to one API tools, and also some of the toolkits that uh, Jose mentioned us. And uh, I'm going to dip in these toolkits uh, related to the main feature of each toolkit and what is the purpose and the scope of the, the use of these toolkits, um, which is uh, more or less the person who who are interested in, in, in these uh, toolkits uh, if they are going to develop some application related with uh, Internet of Things or related with uh, high performance computing or uh, is uh, thinking on one application and would like to to run in different type of devices such uh, CPUs, GPUs, uh, FPGAs, and so on. And finally, uh, I'm going to finish with some of the questions and answers. If there is one of the questions, I encourage you to write the, this question in the chat of um, of uh, the, the Microsoft Teams, uh, please. Uh, if you write down this question at the uh, when I finish this block of slices, I, I'm going to try to to answer of the of these questions. Well, so there is a big challenge nowadays uh, from the developing point of view. Uh, actually, there is a high data centric hardware, uh, typically because uh, the programmers need to use uh, or trying to analyze this uh, kind of uh, data. And these people uh, would like to use uh, some uh, uh, hardware, special hardware, in order to speed up uh, the extraction of some uh, important information of this data. So the main of the problem is that if we are using different type of uh, platforms, and it is seen here, for example, some scalar platform, who is based more or less in CPUs. Uh, but we would like to move uh, all this solution to another uh, processor who will be interesting because we have a lot, a, a big amount of data and we would like to extract the uh, relevant information. And we would like to move to GPUs, for example. There is a main problem that because there is an inconsistent tool across this platform, which is translated to developers uh, uh, with a huge uh, waste time of learning the different uh, set of tools and also how to program one of this accelerator or the general purpose processor. And there is really a big challenge because there are no programming language, no common programming language, and there is no one API, one API when we can move all the, our code develop to one of these 
processor to the other. So this is inconsistent tools uh, support a huge um, effort in terms of developing. So one of the main problems is you have to translate your own application to the other uh, hardware and it involves a, a lot of uh, times uh, with one of the points that it's not possible to reduce. So it is needed uh, some software investment, a huge software investment that I write it down here. So this is one of the main uh, targets and with it, this is one of the main challenges with one API one API try to solve. Try to solve, uh, you develop one code and it is possible to run in different and in multiple architecture at, at and it is shown in this slide. Well, so with this presentation, uh, I'm going to move to the uh, one API concepts. Uh, uh, what I more or less advanced uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous slide. So in the Intel solution, uh, actually is one API. There is one of uh, this is one of the project to deliver an uh, unified programming model. This is basically the idea with this supported one API. So this is one of the uh, unified programming model that it is in here. And it allows uh, to develop one of the code in different environments uh, across the different uh, accelerator, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, as CPU, GPUs, or FPGA, and others. Um, this is one of uh, unify and simplify language and library uh, trying to spread the parallelisms. And I would like to notice that this is a one API industry initiative. So it is not uh, focused only on Intel. It's tried to to be adopted by another uh, vendors and another uh, software uh, communities. So it includes a unified language and libraries, which try to deliver a full native code performance with the uncompromised of native uh, high level performance. As I told you, it is based on uh, industrial uh, standards. And it is one of the idea that it is open specification. Uh, this standard can be adopted by the cross vendor compatibility. Uh, can uh, optimize and can develop uh, their own tools in order to uh, increase uh, the possibilities of one API. So all these inter inter uh, operate with uh, existing HPC programming models is more is the key the key of this product. And I would like to advance that uh, the, the 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 main strengths of one API is the advance of porting and also includes different type of toolkits uh, which is related with analysis and debugger tools. And uh, this debugger and profile, it's across or all these platforms that I mentioned before. So as I told you, uh, one API came from an industry initiative. Uh, it's an alternative to a single version solutions, and it is being built to uh, simplify developer across multiple across multiple type of processors and accelerator not Intel hardware. Uh, try to uh, be a general uh, specification that can be adopted by another vendors. As I told you before, it is uh, based on an open specification and it's enable uh, a broad ecosystems adoption and also innovation. Uh, one API open specify includes uh, uh, data parallel C++, um, which is uh, more or less the core of uh, the application. Uh, it's an API based programming and also includes some libraries and optimized libraries that uh, allows to express parallelism and deliver native high level language performance in all the platform that I mentioned before, such as CPUs, GPUs, SPJs, and so on. So why 
is one API being based on the industry standards and an open specification important? Well, what uh, the answer is because Intel uh, has decades of experience uh, working with the standard group and industry academy initiatives uh, such uh, Fortran groups, so OpenMP, MPI Forum, Chronos, etc. And it's helped to evolve software development language and programming model uh, efficiently scale forward the compute architecture. So one API can be considered a continuation of this effort and it is an open specification and it's allowed the promotion uh, of uh, the community and industry support and it also enables the code to reduce across different architecture uh, and vendor. So it is um, the, the, one of the main strengths and possibilities of one API is, is open and fair process and tries to achieve the interoperability and interchangeability. Well, so as I mentioned before, Data Parallelism++ can be considered the core of one API. It is based on high language, high level language designed for data parallel programming productivity. And uh, as it is mentioned here, it is based on C++, the standard C++. And it provides a full native high level language performance uh, with uh, C++. Uh, I would like to mention also that uh, it is very familiar or can be very familiar for people who are developed in C or C++ uh, uh, constructs to try to move to uh, data parallel C++ because Intel adds uh, some parts of SQL. So uh, as I will uh, present in the next slide, uh, data parallel C++ incorporates uh, some support of heterogeneous programming. So it delivers uh, the well-proof uh, LLVM compiler technology as well as Intel history compiler uh, leadership. So uh, for our point of view, uh, would be a really uh, interesting solution because as I mentioned, it is open, can be a cooperative develop and improvements uh, from the community. Uh, and it allows a continual evolution of uh, this uh, tool. And also uh, can be uh, used the different hardware uh, and trying to reduce the, the code that we have previously developed in one of uh, the language. So what is that uh, data parallel C++ exactly? Well, uh, data parallel C++ or uh, can be seen also as DPC++. Uh, it is based on a standard or SQL standard and also includes an extension. I will to uh, try to explain you in the next block of the slides. Uh, one of the station that uh, is an addition from the point of view of SQL can be the shared memory, the unified shared memory, and also are incorporated another uh, extension from the point of view of expressing the parallelism. Uh, there is a different type of granularity of uh, how, as you can express the parallelism. Uh, and also uh, with uh, one API, there is one of the parts who are uh, more or less focused as uh, in the vector capabilities available in CPUs and GPU as well. So as I told you, one of the main uh, facilities is it is based on C++. So people who are really familiar with C++ can port the core very easily. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it is um, SQL, particularly SQL. Uh, it is based on data parallelism and heterogeneous programming. So it will allow us to move one of the core to CPU, or GPU or even FPGA. Well, as I mentioned also in the previous slides, uh, one API is not only focusing DP C++, it also uh, includes some libraries, some libraries which are optimized 
in order to exploit the different level of parallelism available nowadays in modern uh, processor. So, uh, as Jose mentioned uh, in the different toolkits, uh, there are different type of library who are uh, interesting for some developers. For example, the a math library known as NKL library. Uh, there are also another type of library, for example, in terms of threading, for example, the TBB library, the previous TBB library. Nowadays, it's, it is called one TBB library. Or oh, there are also uh, libraries uh, as DBC++ library, uh, which uh, tries to uh, be the key of algorithms and function to improve the kernel program, pro, uh, programmability. There are also some libraries focused in the analytics and machine learning, and as well as deep learning. Um, and also there are some libraries focused in the video processing that I will, I will going to mention in, in the next slides uh, when I dip on the toolkits. But I, what I would like to, to, to mention in this slide is uh, with these libraries, the, the power, it, it, it will construct a really a powerful uh, API. So it is very easily to pour one of code that you have developed previously to one API if you were using of these libraries because the API is more or less exactly the same. It, it is only needed to add uh, some uh, previous uh, SQL uh, information, but it will be very easily to, to improve the performance and also to, to port our code to different devices as GPU or or until the CPU. Well, so more or less, it will be the summary of uh, uh, a, a general overview of, of, of one API product. I, as I mentioned, it is based on the core of data parallel C++, but also you can add some libraries. And also, uh, in order to improve the performance of the application, you can check some analysis, some performing uh, analysis tools uh, such as uh, Vtune or Advisor that I'm going to mention uh, during today and in the next days uh, I'm going to, to show you how to use this, this, uh, these performance tools. So also it is included one compatibility tool in order to port some of codes that maybe you have developed previously in CUDA and with this tool also in the last day i'm going to show you how you can translate one cuda core directly to to one uh, data parallel c++ code uh, with uh, an 80 percent of the code directly uh, transform and maybe you only have to rewrite uh, between five percent or ten percent of this code and I would like to show you more or less uh, that this is not only uh, an Intel initiative, it is also supported for a big ecosystems. Actually, there are more than 30 companies that support one API concepts. Uh, many of these companies uh, were participating in the Intel Stufkill's uh, BT release and also provide some feedbacks uh, of the functionality of these toolkits. So it is very interesting to know that uh, there are not only uh, from Intel's initiative, uh, uh, there is also Codeplay and many people who are really involved uh, in this initiative. Well, so in the next uh, slides, I'm going to present more or less what are the, um, the details of uh, toolkits, uh, some of the beta toolkits, uh, but actually today I received a mail uh, from Intel that uh, some of the gold version is available for the load. So uh, it is interesting to check uh, which are uh, the main changes uh, from what I'm going to present to today. Well, the first toolkit that Jose also mentioned is the base toolkit. It is, uh, as its name suggests, the base of uh, one API. It is a core set of uh, application and uh, it is basically uh, used as funda foundation toolkit for all type of application at workloads. It's the base tool, libraries and analysis. 
as uh, can be seen here, it includes the data parallel uh, C++ compiler, many of the libraries that I'm going to uh, talk about uh, in a few minutes. And uh, it is very interesting because most of these libraries and analysis tools uh, are custom are customer already using. And all these uh, analysis, as I told you, and in the, in the next session, I will present the BTU and in also Intel Advisor. So, for our point of view, it's very interesting to not only to be here today, also to all, uh, follow us for uh, for the next uh, day, because I'm going to present more or less how these uh, profiling tools can be used with the data parallel. C++ uh, core and also how you can analyze the core not only in CPU but also in in, in GPU as well. Well, um, there is a, a data parallel C++ compiler as I mentioned uh, from this code. Uh, as I told you, it is based on the C++ uh, language. Uh, also, it is based on this uh, CLANG and uh, LLVM compiler, uh, which uh, the important uh, that it has because this is one of the technology. Uh, uh, well, this is one of the technology that is really well prov proven. And what I would like to to notice in this slide is uh, it's totally compatible with the C++ language. It provides a full native high language performance uh, with the C++ standard, and also simply flight immigration of the different devices as CPU, GPU, SPJs, or even another type of of accelerator that could be came from the market uh, in the next years. So it is uh, this the data parallel C++. It is based on SQL, um, which is uh, an industry consortium of uh, Kronos Group. And Intel also uh, have uh, focus on include these extensions uh, from data parallelism and heterogeneous programming also uh, to be incorporated uh, to SQL in, in, in the next uh, in, in the next versions. Well, there is also another uh, compatibility to tool in order to migrate the core and help us to, to the code migration tasks. Uh, uh, from CUDA, uh, from CUDA to, to Data Parallel C++, in fact, uh, the last session, I'm going to focus on this uh, tool and how you can migrate from one code developed directly in CUDA from this compatibility tool, uh, the code that can be uh, read uh, data parallel C++ source. Uh, I'm going to mention that most of the code can be translated uh, automatically between 80 and 90% 80 of the line codes and also is necessary to be a human intervention in a few lines. Uh, however, as I told you, I'm going to present in the last day, and I think it's the, the, the next Friday, these tools and also with one demo, you can download uh, one CUDA uh, code and also uh, I'm going to present how will be the flow of, of translating or migrating the code to the data parallel C++ and also how, how you can compile and finally, uh, how you can uh, execute in different type of devices. Well, uh, the 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 base toolkit it's also it not only incorporates the data parallel C++ compiler. Uh, it also incorporates some optimized standard algorithms. In fact, it contains more than uh, 75 parallelized C++ and algorithms. So Intel's have been a really grateful uh, investment, uh, delivering the enhanced version to support uh, the, the data parallel C++ in a range of uh, of processor. This uh, cross processor, uh, scalar vector matrix, and a special architecture. Uh, I would like to I, I would like to notice also that. Uh, uh, from the point of view of the developers who are very familiar to develop code in C, 
in C++ uh, it's very easy to to use uh, data parallel in C++ and also uh, it's totally compatible with uh, another uh, tools uh, such uh, VTune profiler or, in, or Intel Advisor profiler and or even the, the debugger. Uh, so it uh, speed up the core, the, 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 the code um, developing in CPU and multiple accelerator. Uh, and also I would like to notice the, 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 the debugger uh, will be based on uh, GDB debugger with uh, involves a maximum compatibility and uh, reliability of our code development. Well, as Jose mentioned, uh, there are another type of uh, toolkits. Uh, for example, there is one video processing library, which is a new uh, uh, API for video application. Uh, for example, uh, applications which are based on streaming or editing videos. Uh, with this uh, library, which is called actually one PPL, um, the developers can use the same IP uh, from CPU and GPU, so both of the devices can be used for rendering uh, with no code uh, change. Uh, one VPL is based on Intel Media uh, SDK, and Intel scalable video technology. So these technology are totally proven uh, for users today in production environments. Um, one BPL is one is an AP layer that ties this technology together and simplifies the interface without sacrificing control of hardware. Um, as I told you, uh, with the same effort, you can write code from CPUs and GPUs and run uh, in both of uh, the, the cores. So, so it will be a really powerful tool. So developers uh, use some special uh, parameters related with the codes, visually and quality. And also there are in these libraries uh, some filter and image processing function for example, the noising or image enhancement. Well, there is another library which is included in this uh, base toolkit, which is uh, the Deep Neural Network Library, the DNN library, which is known as 1DNN. Uh, this 1DNN library is an optimized API for creating deep, uh, neural, deep uh, neural, neural networks. So it helps to developers to create a really high performance deep learning frameworks. Of course, uh, also it's available of running in CPU and GPU. And I would like to notice that have uh, totally support in Linux and Windows actually. And it is very well optimized, uh, this library, so mm, it uses an assembler instruction which uh, will uh, speed up your code and increase the performance on some um, processors. Well, uh, there is another library which is called a Collective Communication Library which is uh, basically uh, focused on the Intel uh, MPI uh, library, which tries to uh, optimize the patterns uh, between CPUs, GPUs in, in different nodes. Um, it is based on the interconnect, uh, classic uh, interconnection interface, such Infinibans, Ethernet, and uh, Omnipath architecture, as I told you here, uh, can be focused in MPI libraries and and it's improved uh, the collective uh, operations at all gather or reduce or reduce scatter. Well, from the point of view of the um, profiler, 
uh, there is a couple of tools uh, that also are incorporated in the base uh, in the base toolkit. One of them is Vtune, as I mentioned before. I'm going to present the Vtune in more detail uh, in the next uh, session. Uh, it uh, have the particularity of uh, you could analyze your code developing data parallel C++. Also, you can see the lines which uh, involve more time consuming as here can be used in the all the, um, the hardware supported by one API, CPU, GPU, of SPGA. And also it is, uh, 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 since the last version, it is available uh, to check how your code can be offload in uh, GPU by means of uh, one API offload. So it is really interesting to know uh, that it's not only focused uh, in performance point of view, it's also focusing how your application are parallelized in terms of frame, how is the, 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 the memory for print, uh, and how is the access from the different levels of uh, the memory hierarchy. And I would like to notice that it's supported by most of the language uh, that I mentioned here, C++, that are parallel C++, Fortran, Python, and so on. Well, there is another uh, performance tool that I'm going to show you uh, to the next section uh, related with the performance, that is the Intel Advisor. The Intel Advisor uh, have the particularity of zone uh, uh, here uh, and determines if our code would be benefit of our load or not. So it is very interesting and as I'm going to show you in the next uh, session, uh, it's very interesting to know because this uh, tool can estimate the performance in the accelerator and also suggests if it's interesting to move the code to accelerator or not. So it is really, really interesting uh, all, uh, to because it, it identify the opportunity to download to, to, to the accelerator and also to project the performance on the accelerator. Um, I would like to notice that uh, not a special recompile uh, is required and this Intel Advisor uh, is also available as in previous Intel Advisors tool version uh, with this focus here also. Uh, it's on a roof line analysis that can be seen here in, in this uh, graph and also in terms of a CPU can um, give you an idea how the vectorized the vectorization uh, it, it is performed in our CPU and how uh, our code is expressed the, the parallel threading and also give give us a, a graph analysis analyzers uh, in order to check if this flow graph it is interesting to move some of the routines to an accelerator as GPU or not. So I would like to focus more or less in the next session if in this part in the loading, which are really new. These are the new features. Uh, but I would like to notice that all the uh, analysis that was available in Intel Advisor previously also are included in, in, in one API. Well, and uh, at last, but not the least, uh, I would like to talk about the, the debugger. Well, the debugger, the GDB debugger. Uh, it allows the debug our application not only in CPU, but also in heterogeneous context. Uh, it is based on uh, GDB, so can be incorporated with uh, all tools for debugging. And for example, here in this example in Eclipse, and as I told you, uh, it have totally support on CPU and, and GPU. And in case of SPGA, only in emulation phase. In emulation phase, you can uh, debug your application because in emulation phase, uh, it is run uh, in CPU, so you can debug in, in this part. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, one of one of the main strengths of uh, this debugger it is based on uh, GDB, which is an uh, open source solution. So it allows us um, fibers to incorporate in 
all debugger tools at Eclipse and so on. Well, and uh, finally, in this base toolkit, I would like to talk about the uh, SPGA, the support of PGA that actually have the data parallel C++. So I would like to talk about uh, the code developing data parallel C++ can be run uh, in SPGA. There is more or less the flow of how you can use the SPGA. Uh, first of all, it is very interesting to really do an emulation or CPU to check if the core runs uh, in the correct way and also to analyze by means of this report what are the main bottlenecks. Uh, if you check what are these bottlenecks, you can refine the solution, develop and again uh, doing the emulation, do it several times in order to check if the um, performance uh, satisfy your application. And finally, when it happens, you can really compile uh, from the SPGA and uh, custom your solutions. So from the point of view of the, of the developers, I would like to mention that it's really easy to use. Some people who are or have experience in SPGA previously. So it is very easily to, to create one core for the SPGA because uh, reduce the, um, the developing time uh, so much. And also uh, you can analyze uh, in CPU by means of the Intel profiler how will be the performance and where you can find uh, the, the bottlenecks. So you can find these bottlenecks by means of uh, Intel Btune and also by means of this, of this report. So doing uh, this flow uh, several times, you will have your own code uh, really optimized. Well, so I'm, I finished this base uh, toolkit. I'm going to talk a little bit about some other toolkits that Jose mentioned related with some specific domains. And also it will be interesting for some people who are working in these specialized workloads. Well, the first um, the first uh, toolkit I'm going to mention is the HPC toolkit that I think is very known toolkit because uh, it includes uh, this compiler that, which was uh, in the Intel uh, Parallel Studio Suites. So in Are really uh, everybody knows and there are many people who were uh, using and uh, there are these developers who who, who have uh, expressed uh, the improvements of, of, of this compiler. So in this graph uh, as, as can be noticed all the black uh, squares are referred to the HPC toolkits and the blue one corresponds with the base toolkit that I was talking uh, previously. So these compilers, the C and Forza, uh, the C++ and Forza compilers are very uh, common for people who are uh, interested in increase the performance of their own application. Uh, this pro due to the processor architecture increase the number of cores, the, num the, 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 the width of the vectors, so the vector capabilities also have been increased. Uh, it's very useful for people who are really uh, demanding application in, uh, with uh, really high intensity in, compute, in computational point of view, which are uh, some application in different uh, scenarios such uh, finance, simulation, visualization, video processing and so on. So the Intel compiler, the C++ and Forza compilers uh, are available to advance developer interest in, in taking advantage of these technologies. These uh, seven technologies with uh, the number of cores have increased in the last few years. Uh, also the vector capabilities and, 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 so, and so on. And these Intel compilers uh, are really well optimized for the Intel Xeon processors where you can execute different level of parallelisms at threading 
parallel symbol means of uh, OpenMP or vector capabilities, as I uh, told before, and so on. And actually, I, I would like to notice that uh, since uh, this one API compiler uh, with with the C++ compiler, uh, it's also available to uh, offload some part of the code directly to the GPU. And it's really interesting uh, to know that uh, this uh, offloading is supported actually by OpenMP. In fact, in the last session, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, of one API for offload and how uh, it could be interesting how uh, you can download some part of the code execution to to the GPU accelerator. Well, so there is another toolkit. Uh, not only HPC toolkits are available in one API. For example, it's also available the uh, IoT toolkit with this focus uh, for people who are uh, creating applications uh, in the domain of edge and I IoT devices. Uh, I would like to notice that it offers directly API uh, based on programming with uh, a set of analytics tools that I, it is here available, for example, the Intel Inspector. Uh, you can connect mm, a huge amount of sensor, more than 400 to some of the devices and also will be connected to to cloud, to cloud capabilities, if uh, it is necessary to process uh, this amount of, of data. So in order to accelerate the application, uh, the Intel Inspector uh, would be very um, a, a very interesting recommendation. And also uh, the Intel system debugging in terms of when you develop the solution and also um, uh, you try to to create uh, this commercial solution uh, in, in one uh, device, it will be interesting to check uh, if there is some bottlenecks in the consumption of uh, some hardware capabilities. Well, there is another people who are really interested in the creation of uh, studio animation or, big, or visual effects. Uh, which is uh, rendering toolkit. This uh, rendering toolkit actually only supports CPU, but uh, there is in the roadmap that uh, also will be support uh, CPU as well. Uh, it, there are different type of libraries and also capabilities, uh, as I mentioned before, such image denoising, and also uh, for people who are really uh, interested in ray tracing kernels and creating a more uh, realistic uh, rendering. And I would like to, to notice that uh, with uh, this type of uh, toolkit, you can improve uh, the rendering workloads uh, on on Intel CPU, for example, uh, Intel Xeon processor. Well, uh, there is also toolkits related to the deep learning uh, for people who are really interested in, in, in artificial in intelligent framework, uh, people who are developing and, uh, and also optimizing um, application in this context, in the context of artificial intelligence. And developers can build uh, a new uh, deep learning framework in C++. So uh, this this toolkit have, or contains the, the base tool uh, needed for, for this purpose. Uh, these libraries are also optimized in Intel hardware. Uh, and also, as and it is said here, uh, you can take advantage of Intel CPU and also GPUs as well in order to increase the the, the, the execution. Uh, so this library normally it is called one CCL libraries and also one DNN libraries. It have the particularity and you can uh, distribute uh, your your execution in a multi-node data center. So for this reason, it is needed uh, this collective communication library. So you can uh, 
uh, executing parallel in different nodes of uh, a cluster, for example. And some part of the neural network library is uh, can be executed directly in this cluster, uh, uh, distributing the, the workload between the different cores and also the different nodes. Well, uh, link it with the previous toolkit. Uh, it is the IE Analytics Toolkit, uh, which is based on some um, improvement of the Python distribution who have been compiled previously with the Intel compiler and also can express some parallelisms in terms of uh, threading parallelism and vector and, and also exploiting the vector capabilities. Uh, of course, it is focused for people and researchers in the context uh, on the scenario of uh, artificial intelligence uh, as well as data scientists. And uh, it is interesting to know that uh, it's, uh, you can achieve great, uh, greater performance if you are using deep learning uh, application, not only in training, but also in the inference phases. And well, it is not only Python distribution optimized, it's also PyTorch and TensorFlow. Well, and the last one toolkit uh, that I would like to talk about uh, will be uh, OpenVINO toolkit that also is linked with the previous ones. Uh, this toolkit uh, is focused to, uh, on the accelerate the development uh, of the inference phase when you are going to do in the deployment of the final solution. And uh, this OpenVINO uh, try to do try to do in when you have your model previously um, trained, uh, you can uh, apply in this inference engine in order to optimize before it is going uh, to the development phase, to the deployment phase, sorry. So, of course, uh, it is very interesting for people who are developing high performance deep learning inferences, analytics, and real time image analysis. Uh, actually, it is supported uh, in CPU, GPU as well. And also, uh, some part can be optimized in the SPGA. Well, and there are uh, a couple of uh, toolkits. So, where developments who are creating uh, a high, reliable, and optimized Intel based solution. So, it is focused on the client and server customers. And be between the well, among the main benefits are uh, the reliability with the powerful debug and trace tool. So it's uh, there is a performance analysis, also a thermal analysis and power analysis, and you also can debug your your solution. So with all this ecosystem, um, Intel will strongly invest a range. Uh, in a range of programs uh, to drive the adoption of data parallel C++ language and API. So these programs include uh, developer enabled programs, uh, supports both from Intel and also industry development forums, ecosystem of collaboration efforts and so on. Uh, in fact, I would like to, to notice that uh, I'm going to move in this on and some of the academies and programs. Uh, and also I would like to notice that actually uh, the support of some of these tools uh, connecting with uh, one of the hardware uh, which also Intel uh, uh, give uh, its access to us. It is uh, the Intel the Cloud. Um, the Intel the Cloud includes all these uh, one API toolkit that I mentioned uh, during uh, this block of slices. Also, uh, it allows us uh, to increase the skills of data parallel C++ because data parallel C++ is uh, available in this cloud. Uh, the access 
you 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 can apply for from the access of uh, the Tep Cloud. Uh, Intel gives you at least three months of free access, so it is not needed uh, to download the the compilers, the toolkits, and so on. It is not needed to uh, embed in hardware. It is not needed to install of the software, so you only can access, run your application, evaluate your application, uh, check uh, if heterogeneous uh, is really interesting uh, in your application, it, if it takes into account uh, to download or offload some of your execution to to a GPU, for example, and also you can prototype your code. So I encourage you to create one of the account in this link. Uh, in fact, all the samples that I'm going to present in the last, in the next block, uh, I'm going to use the Intel Dev Cloud. I'm going to to show you how you can use the the Intel Dev Cloud. Can you can submit one of your uh, execution to the Intel Dev, Dev Cloud, and also uh, how you can run uh, your own application. So that's all uh, from this um, block. Uh, only I would like to talk about uh, some of extra resources. You can check and click on each of this link. Also give you an overview of data parallel C++. Uh, and also there is uh, one API programming guide and there is one book uh, of four um, chapters totally free. In fact, uh, the whole book will be available um, uh, through the internet uh, since September or October. I don't remember exactly which uh, which was the date uh, where it was uh, completed, but uh, you can uh, uh, search uh, from the internet and try all, most of the information that you can find with this book uh, will be shown uh, in, in the next block. Well, so I don't know if there are some questions. Let's check it if there are some questions in the chat. If not, I'm going to pass to the next block. I don't know if there are some questions here. No, there are no questions. So you have any comments, questions, please write down there and I can uh, answer you. Well, um, I'm going to pass to the next block. Well, so in this block, I'm going to move um, Well, so in the next block of slices, I'm going to present uh, the core of uh, one API, the data parallel C++. Uh, or that I'm going to present more or less is uh, how you can create one your own code, how you can run your own code in the Intel Dev Cloud. In fact, uh, I'm going to use some Jupyter notebooks in order to show uh, the main features of, of data parallel C++. And also, I'm going to present uh, what uh, are the construction of uh, on data parallel C++, how you can select your uh, the device, how you can communicate with the device uh, in order to send some information to the device and run a kernel in the device. So it is more or less what I'm going to present in this block of slices. So I divide the block of uh, this second block in in uh, what exactly is uh, Data Parallel C++, uh, what are the main difference between Data Parallel C++ and SQL? How will be the first code? How will be the, the hidden that uh, is needed to be included? Uh, how you can define uh, a queue? How you can define uh, the data uh, by means of buffers and you can trans uh, transfer to to the kernel and also how you can execute the kernel. So I'm going to present uh, the memory model in order to show 
how you move the data from the host to the device, and also how you can run this kernel uh, into the devices. Well, uh, the main objective uh, of this block uh, will be introduce the data parallel C++, uh, the, the core structure, so it's really the most important thing. How will be the core structure? Uh, all the conf all the concepts to to write down the first code, and these concepts, uh, as I told you, I am going to show you in a Jupyter notebook, and also I present in the in the Intel Dev Cloud how you can uh, try to rewrite the code and also execute by yourself. Well, uh, as I was talking uh, in the last block uh, related with the introduction of uh, one API, there is a really uh, important challenge uh, from the point of view of programming uh, because of uh, there is a really specialized workload based of on this uh, data centric. Uh, this data centric who in order to improve the performance will be uh, downloaded to the um, in CPU and a multi-core CPU or in a, in a CPU or even in a SPGA. So the main problem of using this uh, architecture, which are based on a scalar vector matrix or a special uh, computation, is that uh, there is no language, there is no one API in common. So if you develop a code, for example, for a CPU, uh, there is a really hard effort in order to translate it. It translate this code to be run in a in GPU, for example. So this inconsistent tool uh, makes an effort able uh, to move uh, some of our codes to another uh, platform from from another across platform. And it involves a really important investment on time and investment on of, of um, developer developing time, developing effort in order to to translate and and to to create one core uh, uh, totally um, available for different uh, processor, this cross processor. Well, so this is one one of the aspects that one MPI is trying to to solve. With uh, when I with the data parallel C++, uh, we are going to to try uh, to solve this gap. So we are going to create one code that could be uh, uh, executing could be executed uh, in CPU, in GPU, and SPGA in, in all these cross uh, processors. So can be seen this data parallel C++ as a standard. Uh, as I commented previously, it is based on C++ and it is. for heterogeneous computing. So it uh, have in favor that it enables the code reuse from uh, across this, this, this different architecture and vendor. So it is more or less the, 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 the key point, the, the strength, the strength of uh, one API. Well, so I'm going to present now the SQL and the main difference with uh, data parallel C++. Uh, as I told you in the first block of slices, data parallel, uh, data parallel C++ uh, or also known uh, DP, uh, DPC++, it is based on C++ and also in SQL standards and includes an extension, some Intel extension uh, with the, I will comment during today and basically tomorrow which has this extension which differs from the SQL standard. Uh, it is based on uh, C++, so people who are really familiar with uh, C++ coding can uh, benefit of porting uh, it, uh, their code to, to data parallel C++ and also include some familiar constructions, some parallel constructions, so you can express the parallelism um, uh, in data parallel C++ uh, because uh, since uh, C++ uh, version um, 17, there are also some templates in terms of parallelism. So you can apply also them uh, in order to create one core uh, totally available across the different uh, architectures uh, in order to exploit the data parallelism and also the heterogeneous uh, execution. Well, 
what is exactly SQL? Uh, as I told you, SQL uh, is an industrial uh, standardization effort uh, which defines one cross platform to execute a lot of data, uh, but this data uh, can be executed in parallel. Well, it is also support the C++. Uh, it has the ability of having only one uh, single source. So in one uh, single source code, you can uh, write down the code for the host and also the code for the device. In one code, uh, can be right both of them. Uh, it stir the schemes of uh, C++ uh, as I told you, these uh, templates for execute parallel, uh, these parallel uh, templates, and it is an an industry initiative uh, who are group all of them in the, in a standard by means of uh, Kronos, Kronos Group. So Intel's uh, is one of the participants. Uh, Intel's uh, is not. Uh, there are more of more people who are in, involved in this standard, so it is really interesting because uh, this solution uh, is not only promoted by Intel. There are other vendors who are really interested in in, in support uh, this uh, data parallel C++ uh, and have the particularity uh, to be adopted by other vendors, so you can translate your code. Uh, to data parallel C++ and also executing different type of devices, not only uh, based on Intel. So this is one of the main uh, of the of the challenge. So one of the main contributions of Intel is uh, this extension that I was uh, noticed uh, previously. So this extension maybe will be uh, new additions in the future version of SQL. This is one. Of, of the idea of, of Intel. So uh, one API uh, actually supports the version uh, 1.21 of uh, of SQL, uh, which uh, was uh, productivity uh, to express uh, the parallelism in terms of data parallelism and vector parallelism. Uh, as difference of OpenCL, uh, try to reduce uh, all these many of the code lines in order uh, to select the device, in order to select the queue, and so on. So this is one of the important uh, point uh, to take into account. It reduces uh, qualitatively uh, the verbosity of the code. So from the programming point of view, it is easier. It is easier to create a solution and also it is more uh, readable. It increased the performance uh, so much because uh, have the particularity of uh, giving to the programmers all the control of uh, program execution. And also uh, it is um, possible to, to create a one uh, data parallel C++ code in order to exploit the hardware specific features of this hardware. So vector capabilities that I'm going to show you uh, not today, but uh, but the next day, the next session. Well, uh, and also I, I would like to 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 point into account that uh, it is based on a, a LLVM technology, so it's a really proven technology and it also is an open source code an open source implementation so it allows to the community to uh, improve the implementation and also to create uh, new features to this implementation that uh, will be probably go to the next uh, version of of SQL so another station so this is part of uh, the strengths of uh, one api well, uh, how the in one API, how you can express the parallelism, the parallelism that is involved in one of your code? Well, uh, it is based on kernels. So one the one of the code that uh, is executed to the device, uh, it is done by these kernels. Uh, 
the the kernels uh, as I'm going to show you in the next slides, uh, it is attached to one of the device and, and, and a queue. So uh, this kernel can be executed uh, by different instance and, and uh, in this instance can be done in parallel. For example, if you have uh, this code uh, where uh, it is based on the adding of two vector, the B vector and C vector, which is add and also to store in the A. Uh, it is the classical for loop and it's totally um, parallel because there are no dependencies between each iteration. So you can create an upload uh, version by means of this Lambda uh, with a parallel for. Uh, you can express that the sum of the B and C vector can be done in parallel. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, in more detail in the next slides, but uh, it is very interesting to 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 check that uh, from one for loop you can create uh, one version to the accelerator uh, only changing uh, a few lines. Well, what are the basic kernels in order to express the parallelism? in terms of uh, one API. Well, uh, one of the basic uh, schemes are uh, to create in this parallel for. This parallel for, uh, uh, as I told you uh, previously, um, all the iteration are executed in parallel. So the code that we'll be writing here uh, is known as kernel. So this kernel will be executed in the accelerator directly. And also you can index part of uh, the execution in parallel. So you can index, uh, well, first of all, the range. The range are here. There are uh, 1024 iterations and can be executed in parallel. Uh, and you express uh, that each instance has only uh, one iteration. So this iteration, uh, you can check the the idea of the iteration and what are the ranks of, of this iteration as, as, as I notice here. So the range describes the whole space of parallel execution. The ID express only the indi individual instance and the ATM class represents this individual instance in this kernel function. Well, um, how you can express the parallelism in, in, in the data parallel C++? Uh, I would like to, to show you here that uh, the kernel are based in the classical model. Uh, also, in that is also available in CUDA or in OpenCL. This is known as ND range. The ND range is the way and you can express the parallelism. Uh, you can express this, this parallelism and also the degree of parallelism in, in two hierarchies. For example, you have all, all the data available here. Uh, so each instance are called work item. Work item represents one of the, the, the dot on, on the queue. And you can create a group of these uh, work items in a work group. Uh, this syntax is not new in open in one API. It's also available in CUDA and by CUDA blocks and CUDA threads and also it's available in in, in OpenCL uh, expressing the parallelism in, in the uh, ND, ND range kernel way uh, by means of uh, work groups and work items. So it, 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 this scheme is, is a scheme that is followed in, in the one API in, in, the, in the one API um, a scenario. Well, how you can express in a kernel? Well, in this case, for example, the the parallel for that I was previously uh, mentioned. In this parallel for the ND range uh, can be expressed here, where you express that you have one cube, and this cube uh, you will have uh, work groups. And the work groups in this case are work groups or 1024 elements. Sorry, uh, there are uh, 1024 work items in total. Oh, and there are a group in work groups are 64. 
So this is the way where uh, you can express. So with this ND range, uh, you represent how the execution will be grouped uh, in parallel, uh, will be grouped in these work groups. This work group that corresponds here, 64. And mm, you will have uh, 1024 work items divided by 64 it will be the number of all uh, the work groups. Well, the correspond of the memory model. Uh, I'm going to present this model in more detail tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, the next session. Uh, it is based on the buffers, buffers memory. So in this queue, this is the queue where uh, the kernel is expressed. In fact, the kernel is here. This is the kernel, the parallel for kernel. So you create a buffer. A buffer is a mechanism uh, where you can uh, share the data free to in the host because in theory this definition is, is in host but by means of this accessor you can access to the buffer that will be in the in the host so uh, in the memory model you create a buffer with this structure to share information between the host and the device and um, by means of the accessor, you can access directly to the to the data which is allocated in the in the buffer. Well, uh, with this more or less these ideas, I I, I go to present uh, one of the first code, the, the 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 data anatomy of the code. Um, the first part uh, corresponds of including uh, the headings. You have it is needed to to include the this heat this header uh, and also if you are using SPGA uh, it is necessary to include uh, the selection of the SPGA but the, it, it will not the context of this workshop but uh, I would like to notice if some of you uh, are using SPGA as well well so the first part part is include uh, the, the headers and also to express that you are using the the, the SQL name, name space. So these two lines uh, are required in order to create a data parallel C++ code. Uh, later uh, will be the main uh, the main function, and in the in the main function you will uh, describe the queues. The queues are the mechanisms uh, where you attach uh, the devices. Uh, and where you offload the code to the to the device. So it, the, the queue will be include uh, the memory access, so the accessors. So it will include which buffers can be accessed by uh, the queue and also the device. The device where uh, the execution uh, will be done. And finally, it is include the the code, the kernel code. So all this information will be linked to the queue. Where, well, how do you define a queue? The queue is very easy to to create a queue here uh, as different of OpenCL. Uh, only def define in the queue. Uh, you select uh, exactly the queue. In this queue, you can define if you are selecting CPU, GPU, other accelerator, and so on. And you submit the the, the code to to the queue uh, by means of the kernel. The lines of the kernel will be writing here. Uh, normally, the kernel are defined with this lambda execution uh, available in in C++. Well, so. You define the queue, you define the buffers attached to this queue, and you submit uh, the queue with the accessors and the code of the kernel, and this this code will be execution uh, in the device. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to, to present here in the next slides. Well, when the queue was defined, uh, you create the queue, you submit a queue a here in the queue, will be the lines of the kernel. The lines of the kernel, you can specify the kernel uh, as a single task, where the kernel will be only executed by uh, a single a single work item. 
you can execute uh, in a four way, for example, in a parallel four, uh, as was done uh, in all the samples. And you can specify in a in a four in, in a in a four way, for example, like this. I I will talk about a little bit uh, in the next slides. Uh, here uh, you express what are exactly the range and what are the work group size, or you can express in these ways, expressing first of all what are the work group and what are the work item. So these four correspond with the execution of, 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 of this one. Well, uh, what is needed? What more is needed? As I mentioned before, when you create uh, a queue, it is needed uh, what are the data uh, which uh, will be uh, accessed. So it is needed to create a buffers. And uh, in this queue will be attached the, the data as well as the kernel. And how will we access the data from the kernel? Will well, will be accessed by means of this structure called accessor. OK. So more or less, it will be correspond to the first code. Our first code uh, it is the main routine. Uh, this will be the definition of the A, B and C vectors. These are the buffers. The buffers, uh, if you remember well, uh, will be the structure of data structure when you share the information between the host and the device. So here you create a buffer and attach the buffer to the A vector. So you uh, create uh, one copy to the to the uh, A vector here and can be accessed by this variable, the buffer buff A. Uh, in the same way with B and C, ha all of them have one. 1024 elements and now I create the queue. I create the queue. This queue, I don't identify if the queue will be executing a CPU, GPU or another accelerator. So it will be a queue by default. Well, after the queue is created, I submit the queue here and I create the accessor in order to access to the buffers. So here I create one accessor that I name A that point to B, buff A and the same way to B and C. The only particularity that I would like to notice is uh, the A will be only read, the B will be only read and the C will be only write. So it will, by means of this accessor, it's not only link, which will be the data in order to access, but also it is uh, confirmed the way in you can access to this data in a read or write way. Well, and finally, which is highlighted here, corresponds with the kernel. This is the kernel. The kernel that in this case will be a parallel for kernel. As the vectors uh, have 1024 elements, the range will be 1024. And in this case, it is adding the B and C that it is also linked with the buffers. And finally, this A and B will be read in this read way and C will be store the data of this particularity. So I will notice that all the code that uh, is writing here will be uh, executing in the host. The creation of the buffers, the submission of the queue and so on, and only the part corresponding of the kernel will be executed in the device. Only the part that is highlighted here. Well, the only thing that I would like to notice is this part. This part corresponds to the life of the kernel. So the kernel, sorry, to, with the, the time that the buffer uh, 
uh, is uh, enabled, the buffer will be accessed. So the buffer is created here. And when it reach to this point, the buffer is destroyed. So the time life of the buffer depends on where you define the region. What? So this will be our complete program. Uh, as I told you before, it's a single source code. You have the code of the kernel. You have the code of the host. And all are allocated in a single node. Well, it is interesting. It is interesting to notice that uh, the Q construct corresponds what uh, the all the kernel that will be executing the device. Also, uh, there is a buffer in order to manage the data, and the parallelism that will be executing the the device will be done by means of this lambda function, uh, which is uh, very common in C++. Well, I'm going to present which are the execution model with an MPI and how uh, our code is executed in, in host uh, or in the device. As I told you, it's a single source code you can uh, compile. I will present you how you can compile. Uh, but uh, all the code, uh, in, in the code you define uh, a queue, and in the queue you define the kernel. The kernel with R, the source code of the execution that uh, have you performed in the, um, in the device. So in this single source, uh, you are executing this kernel code by means of submitting a queue and the source code of uh, uh, will be written by means of these kernels and the rest of the code will be run naturally in a CPU. So the CPU will be in charge of how to submit the queue. In fact, uh, this submission of the queue will be in a synchronous way I will talk a little bit uh, later uh, and also it will be need uh, from the point of view of the CPU where uh, it's necessary uh, to insert some of the synchronization phase in order to check if uh, the kernel is finalized or not in the device. So in this source code there is a part The code is the classical C++ code, so there is, I think there is nothing important to mention. And in the device, there is mechanisms in order to execute the code that are queues that I told you. And in the queues uh, are included, the kernels are included, the buffer accessors, and are included also the way in it is downloaded or flow to the, to the device. Uh, as I told you, the execution of the code is totally asynchronous from the point of view of the host. So when uh, the host uh, invoke uh, the queue submission, uh, all this part uh, will be run uh, in, the, in, the, in the device and there is no control from, from, the, from the host. So the programmer needs to add some asynchronous, uh, some asynchronous uh, phases. And you can choose the device when you select the queue. So where the kernel will be executed. There are different ways. The first way, which uh, I showed you in the previous slides, is uh, run in somewhere by default. By default, I don't care the device uh, chosen, so I don't select any of the devices. And the second way is explicitly uh, select the, the device. So you can select the host, a CPU, an SPGA, or another type of acceleration. Well, how is uh, the, the execution model? The execution model is the next one. You have your own code, your own code, and 
In this code, you have part of the code related with the host that will be executed directly in the host. Uh, all the instructions will be allocated in the host memory and the data normally initialization, initialization phase or at the end, if you would like to write uh, some of the results to one file, well, it will be executed in the host as usually execute one C++ uh, code. And you also have your device code. Your device code that also is attached to a queue. Well, in the queue, it is attached by means of this command group. It's attached to a queue and this queue will be executed to the device. So in the device will be executed the code that is defined in the kernels. Also, it defined the buffers that uh, will be accessible accessible from this uh, global memory and also you as you um, inform to the queue uh, which are exactly the device if the device is a gpu or a cpu or a spga so how you can select the device as i told you uh, previously uh, you cannot select any of the device so you select as default all the samples uh, shown previously are done uh, in this way. So the, the selector is by default or you can select explicitly. If you select uh, one of the devices explicitly, uh, you select, for example, a GPU, an accelerator, a CPU or, an, or a host. And also there is a third way in order to select a, a device by in a custom way. Uh, this custom way uh, will be created in a special class and in, in this special class uh, custom selection uh, you can select uh, one of the device uh, from all the devices available. So you can select your device uh, in a short code and also you can select the, the device by means of one environment variable. So if you define, for example, uh, one device uh, as default, you can control which uh, the device will be selected by this uh, environment variable. Uh, in this queue that goal was by default, uh, the GPU. If you don't, don't define any uh, variable, any environment variable uh, will be selected by default uh, as previously. Well, so in this case, for example, the code that uh, I showed you before, uh, it is select uh, the queue. Instead of using the default selection as previously, it is selected the GPU selection. So now the code will be run in the GPU. So the code uh, will be executed directly in the GPU. So I would like to notice that uh, this queue is attached to one of the devices. Uh, one queue cannot be attached to more than one device. So it is seen here, for example, there is one queue to a CPU, there is one queue to a GPU, there is one queue to a SPGA, one queue to the GPU. In this case, another GPU is GPU2. Uh, it is available that several queues attach to the same device. It, it is allowed. So this part, it is allowed. What it is not allowed is one queue to different devices. Multiple queues can be bound to the single device. That is allowed. And also I would like to, to notice that uh, the host device is always available. So if you like to, for example, to debug your application, you can select your queue to the host and you can uh, using a debugger as a GDB or another type of debugger to, to check uh, your code if it is uh, properly developed or not. Well, so I, I show you here a couple of examples. Uh, for example, you select uh, the CPU and now with this source code, uh, it is shown which are the device selected with this get info. With this uh, get info, it is so by the screen, the name of the device and also which are the vendor. 
So a possible output, for example, will be here. Yeah, I select this uh, Intel processor, this uh, i5 processor. Uh, uh, this run into 3 gigahertz, and the vendor in this case is the Intel Corporation. Well, you can uh, use the same idea for different type of devices, like in this example here, I select the default, the host, the CPU, GPU, and so on. And the case of uh, uh, the, the selection will be uh, by default, for example, it is shown one uh, GPU, one G integrate GPU, this G9 uh, GPU. If you select the host, uh, will be the SQL host devices. If you select the CPU, will be this CPU, for example, or the GPU, of course, the same GPU as previously, and accelerator. If you se select the accelerator, in this case, you, as you, you select the SPJ. SPJ in, in the simulation phase. If you select the accelerate, the SPJ selector, you will select a proper SPJ, the hardware. Uh, the hardware SPJ instead of the uh, emulation phase. Well, uh, how will be the, the compilation flow? You have your own code, as I showed you previously. You have here your own code. Uh, you compile by means of the compiler, the Data Parallel C++ compiler. Uh, under the compiler will be uh, the generation of the kernel uh, using uh, all these schemes. Uh, the, depending of the of the devices selected, uh, you will have the object, and with the link, you finally have the executable that you can uh, write down. And with this executable, uh, during the execution phase in the runtime, uh, you can select the different uh, devices, or CPU, or GPU, or SPGA, and it will depend. Uh, if uh, you have select a default uh, device or you have select a, a specifically device or you select a default device and uh, and you'd allocate environment variables for example to a cpu or whatever so this is more or less the execution flow at the runtime of the data parallel c plus decide what the code uh, will be executed in the in, in the different devices and and the way of the accessors it will be read write the buffers or whatever well, so I'm going to finalize the group of uh, these slices, uh, try to, to show you a couple of examples in the Intel Dev Cloud. So uh, it, I, I encourage you to to create an account in the Intel Dev Cloud. In the Intel Dev Cloud, uh, as I told you before, uh, there are different type of hardware available, CPU, GPUs, and SPGA. So you can select the different uh, uh, hardware. Uh, you, you can access, you can uh, develop your code and also execute in the different uh, queues and select different type of devices. So it's really easy. Um, in fact, uh, for 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 today, I would like to present how you can use the the, the Intel Parallel, uh, uh, the Intel Dev Cloud, uh, and I'm going to focus in some of the samples and you can access. Uh, there are known as essential of data parallel C++. Today, I'm going to show you the sample 0 and the sample 1 that corresponds with the first code uh, of the data parallel C++ and how you can use uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, in the Intel Dev Cloud. So I encourage you to, to follow the links and click uh, uh, create an account and trying to access and also time to replicate our samples that I'm going to show you uh, in a few minutes. So, uh, in theory, if, if you re if you're registered in the Intel Dev Cloud, uh, you will receive an email. Uh, and with this uh, identify, you can click here, you access uh, with this uh, identify, and you, and you can go directly to all the essential codes that uh, is presented in this slide. So, uh, this one I, I'm going to show you here uh, now. If it is working, but I don't know if it's working or not because I create uh, my session. So if you enter to the Dev Cloud, for example, you can uh, launch uh, a Jupyter. Uh, a Jupyter, when the environment uh, it is up, uh, you launch the server of the Jupyter and you can access 
to all these uh, essential samples. This is more or less what I try to show you here in a few minutes. Let's check it. Let's wait a couple of minutes. Okay, it is ready, I think. Well, if you enter for the first uh, the, f the first time, okay, this will be the first uh, welcome uh, a welcome Jupiter notebook. Um, if if you enter here. Uh, more or less, it express uh, what you can find in the Internet Cloud. Uh, I don't know if you, if, if you have used a Jupyter Notebook previously, but uh, for uh, my point of view, it's um, very didactic. So I'm trying to use it because it's, uh, you only have to click in, in the boxes and, and, and it is uh, directly executing. Uh, all, all the sentences that are writing down there. So, for example, here, if uh, uh, now it is uh, in, in, in the dev cloud and it will be an echo, say running, it's sleep three seconds and later it is uh, uh, write another echo done. So, in this first session, um, I go to present more or less uh, what what are here exactly in the, in the, in the, in the Intel Depth Cloud. So there are different type of queue you can access uh, to all the uh, jobs that you have launched to 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 the queue. Uh, more or less here it is it is said how you can launch your first uh, Hello World samples. Uh, for, for, for a queue, and now it is written this file, the hello world sample. And in this uh, hello world sample, there are three echoes. And after that, there is one uh, LS CPU to know what are the, the, the CPU where this code is running and also the version of Python and so on. And in fact, you also can uh, write uh, LS in order to see what are your own, your 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 files uh, and so on. Well, if I'm going directly to essential, because I think is the, the, the more important things. Uh, if uh, if uh, I run the first uh, sample, the sample zero will be the introduction to the Jupyter of notebooks uh, of one API. You can uh, watch the video. A couple of uh, the, these next uh, few few minutes. Uh, it's very easy to to follow. It's only necessary to run and to click here in the run button, and it executes uh, the cell that is writing here. For example, uh, I'm going to write down uh, one file to write one file in the in the in the folder uh, source with the name hello.cpp. Uh, it is included here, uh, this header. Uh, also, there are three macros, and this is the, the, the main, the main, the main surf routine with only uh, presenting the screen, hello world. Well, if I execute this, uh, now the file is written. Let's wait a few seconds to answer the Jupyter, but the, the file will be written here. And also I can build and, and execute uh, this file. So I don't know why it's taking so much time in order to create a file because it, it, it is an initial. Yes, that these are the hello CPP. I don't know why. Well, I got to, to, to explain. Uh, uh, well, in, in this box, 
uh, it is compiled, it is compiled and and execute. When it, there is one script that is invoked, this, this run hello. If you open this run hello, it, there is uh, one source in order to set up all the environment variable of one API. There is one echo, and this is the compiler phase. So it is invoked the compiler, this data parallel C++. Um, this is the source, the source file, and this is the executable. Well, and then when it is created, uh, it is invoked the executable directly, this hello executable, and in theory, should be executed. I don't know why. It is not very common. I'm going to restart the kernel, it is possible. Well, I don't know what's happening. OK, let's see if now I can write down. Yes, I write down the, the, the short code. And now I'm going to compile and execute. So the run hello script compiles and later this is uh, launch uh, the execution to a common queue with this run hello so it is invoking uh, it is uh, submitting the the, um, the job uh, to one queue sorry and this is the output. Well, the output is hello world that is written in blue. If, uh, for example, I now I would like to create uh, the executable and and the the printout will be done by in red. I don't know why it takes so so much time. Well, in theory, uh, if you run again, when it it's answered, uh, now the output will be uh, in red. But I don't know why it is going so bad today. Okay, I'm going to explain more or less uh, the first module, how you can create the first data parallel C++ program. Here, more or less, present you an overview and also the challenge of uh, how you can reuse uh, your source code in different uh, cross processors by means of uh, one API. This is more or less what I was discussing during the day. But maybe it's finished the previous one. Yes, now Hello World wasn't read. Well, well, let's continue with this with, with the first example. Well, in the first example, uh, what I'm going to present here uh, is uh, on one example that I'm going to run. Um, well, it is include the, the hidden libraries, uh, this the SQL, and now in the main subroutine, I create uh, one queue. That I define by default because it's not it's not uh, any selection uh, explicitly uh, writing here. Uh, in the next line here uh, will be uh, print out uh, which are the device with the get info uh, with the with the get info tool. So will be so the name of the device. And now I create the data. Well. I'm not talking about uh, the data, the, the, the data management, uh, what I present uh, all of you was only um, uh, was only based on buffers, but there is another, another way with open uh, one, one API, uh, which is a uh, unified memory allocation, which is one of the station of one API with respect to its cycle. I will be, I, I'm going to comment in the next session uh, this, but uh, 
what, what, what I only to mention is when you create with this mal maloxer the, this 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 vector uh, data, uh, you can access uh, to this data from the host and the and the device directly with without any synchronization and any accessors uh, way. So this is another way to to create uh, uh, or to manage the data. But I will talk a, a little bit uh, the next day, so I, I will not stop a little uh, more in that uh, here. So what, what, I, what I would like to, to tell you is this data is uh, in theory serve uh, the access from the host and the device. So now I initialize the, this data from the host point of view. And when I create a queue, I create a queue uh, now with the range, uh, these N elements, uh, for from this lambda, so it, each instance will be executed here. So it's uh, the data will multiply by two, so it's double the the, the value. And I have to wait uh, in this point because if you remember the execution of uh, of one kernel in data parallel C plus uh, plus is done asynchronously. So it is necessary to wait until the kernel finish in order to print out uh, the data uh, correctly, because if not, you can print out the data that only was initialized and not uh, was performed the kernel. So the, it, it, it was the reason of uh, doing this this wait here. In order to the host wait until the kernel finish uh, to, to print out the data. Well, I don't know somebody is phoning me. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to do is to compile and execute the, the code. Um, so let's see if the results, uh, the double doubling all the uh, the component of the data have been performed correctly in the in by means of SQL. What I would like to notice is uh, the um, when you launch uh, the job, this queue. I would like to show you here that you are selecting. Um, you are selecting a GPU. Here you are selecting the GPU queue. So the execution uh, will be done in a in an in a node where a GPU is available, and as you select. Um, the as you select uh, the device by default uh, will select normally the, the device with more uh, computation capabilities. So uh, the, the the device will be the, the GPU. I don't know why today is going so slow. I don't know why it's going so slow. But it's not. I, I will try to connect to one queue directly. I try to connect one one queue with EPU directly in instead of uh, launching the um, the Jupiter kernel, but uh, there is no no GPU available. Maybe there is no uh, one slot of GPU free nowadays. 
and that that is the reason of uh, I should meet uh, the job, but there is no answer from the job. Because normally uh, here will be print out all all the data. No, I don't know why. Well, um, let's see. I'm doing by by the uh, by means of the console, but it's exactly the same that by means of Jupyter. So we wanna be essential. So if I'm going to the intro, and in theory, the simple vector. Yeah, it's created here. Yeah, it's compiling and now execution. So I'm going to execute the script. Is compiling. And then in theory, execution. Yes, that's that's done. Well, in fact, it is still here, waiting for the for the job that, that the job will be finished. Well, if you remember, uh, I always initialize the data by zero, one, two, three, four, and now here uh, we multiply by two. So finally, uh, the result will be. Uh, zero, two, four, six. Uh, at at this, uh, at, at can be seen here. Zero, two, four, six, so on. And the device chosen is the uh, the GPU, the Intel Graphics uh, Gen 9 GPU. So uh, as a summary, uh, what I'm trying to 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 present today is uh, how you can create the first the first code with uh, with data parallel c++ how you can select the device in this case uh, is in any device uh, is selected by uh, by default so will we sell will we chosen uh, the device which in theory have the higher computation capabilities uh, i also show you how you can create buffers uh, in order to communicate uh, to the kernel uh, it is not the case of this example because we are using universal memory, however, and also how you can create uh, one kernel by means of a lambda function here and can you express the parallelism by means of the end range. And finally, with um, the cluster, the Intel Dev Cloud cluster, how you can run an Uh, one API. In fact, uh, there is one flow of how you can develop your own code. Here we have your develop a new and existing C++ code by means of the data parallel C++. However, you can uh, create it from the CUDA that will be seen in the last session today. And later, the, the next day, we will show you how you can check by means of the pro profiler tools such a uh, VTune and advisor, how this uh, code that you have developed uh, uh, is using the different level of parallelism and it, there are different type of bottlenecks and it, if uh, it is uh, it, it is a good idea to to offload the code from from the CPU to to, to a GPU. But uh, I, I, as I told you, it will be commented uh, the next day. So what I present more or less is the, 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 the platform model. Well, how you can create the execution model by means of this and the range, how you can uh, use the memory model by means of the buffers normally, but uh, also the next session I, I'm going to present the unifies our memory. And also I, here you have one exercise that you can do uh, during this five ten minutes uh, 
uh, that corresponds of uh, of this SSI. You can follow, you can uncomment these lines uh, as it is uh, right down in the comments uh, in order to to present the uh, to present the, well, the, the results and and if you have any any doubt refer to to this example so you can check the solution of of, of the of the proper example uh, what what i would like to to mention is it uh, will be very available to to reread uh, this jupyter notebook in order to check how you can create a file how you can write down the file how you can submit a file to the queue by means of this command and how uh, this script uh, are done uh, transparent to, to the user, the compilation phase, and also uh, to submission to the queue. And that's all. Uh, more or less what I present today is how you can take advantage of one API solutions. And by means of Intel Dead Cloud, how you can write down your first code and also to execute the first code. Uh, and uh, this code can be run in different uh, devices. Uh, well, uh, this is that's all. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in the chat. Uh, let's check it. Uh, 